had you applied every single season? <laughs> Not every. So first season, we heard about it. Um, it was like rumbles in the community that there was going to be this show and they were looking for drag queens. Um, it came out and we all saw it and we're like, okay, cool. You know, it is what it is. Then they were like, we're casting another season. And so then that's when they used to scout and they would actually go and find drag queens. And so they would come to Mickey's and uh, Rage Mm -hmm. and they would be like, hey, we're we're scouting. We're trying to like cast this show. And (laughs) season two, they came. I'll never forget it. They came to fucking Mickey's, asked us, and it was me. The cast at that time was a set cast. It was me, Raven, Morgan, and um, Jackie Beat, I believe. And they came backstage. They asked us if we want to do it. We all said no. Everyone's like, no, we're cool. Mm -hmm. Those bitches lied to me, went and fucking filmed audition tapes with those people, and then got on the show. Stop. I didn't know this until Morgan was going away and asked um, the day that she was going to the airport um, to leave. They were like, she was like, "Um, can you just make sure my dad's okay? And I was like, what are you you talking about? Where are you going? Yeah. And she was like, oh, um, I I just have to go do this thing. And I'm like, what thing? And she's like, I can't talk about it. I just got to go do this thing. And then I was like, oh, this bitch is going to go film that fucking show they were talking about. And then the next day, we were all supposed to work together uh, in v- at VIP in Riverside, and Raven wasn't there. And I was like, where the fuck? And I'm like, these motherfucking bitches, they went and did the show. And it's they didn't like, even tell you. Didn't even tell me. Fucking assholes. Yeah. Sh- shady fucking cunts. Let- let's put a hypothetical here. <laughs> let's put a hypothetical. Let's say that you would have said yes, uh-huh. and you would have done it. Uh-huh. How do you think you would have fared on that second season? Ooh, I think it would have been fun because mm-hmm. I would have been there with three of my my close friends and it would have just been let's dominate and just take over. It would have been fun because yeah. I I our our vibe together is hilarious and I think it would have made good TV and especially being comfortable doing something like that, especially back then when it was more I think it had a vibe of being more authentic. It wasn't yes. it wasn't yes. people going with a character and an agenda and making their own, producing their own stories. It was literally like, let's go and show them the best drag queen. Mm-hmm. I think it would have been a fun thing. So I think too, I was like thinking about it right now when you said that, I was like, ooh, <laughs> that would have been a good season. It would have been fun. It really would have, especially the challenges they had back then. I was like, the eating challenge was like my favorite thing. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Yeah, I was like, why would it? Because back then I loved Fear Factor and I was like, bitch, I could have did that. I could have ate anything. I would have, yeah, it would have been fun. And that was a fun cast too. That was a good cast. Yeah. So that ends up happening, but to a sideline before we get into more Drag Race, I want to know from you, what would a typical night in like 2001 to 2008, Mm -hmm. what would a typical night be like for you? Like, (laughs) I want to hear like, like choose a club, go to this club, tell me the environment. I want to know. I would pick up everyone. We would go to my drag mom's house um, and get in drag because I couldn't do it at home Mm -hmm. (laughs) for obvious reasons. and. Uh, we would go to the club. After the club, we would, um, I would yell, follow the white focus. Everyone, that was like the, ah Like, that was the, that was the cue for everyone that, be like, okay, we got to follow Mayhem because she knows where the party's at. And we would stop <laughs> at a CVS or a mm-hmm. Rite A's, Walgreens, whatever, whatever was near. <laughs> and I would give Morgan the keys in my car. And I would run inside, grab a handle of vodka, <laughs> grab a 30 pack of beer or whatnot, and run. And <laughs> all she had to do was keep the car running, have the window down. I would throw everything in, dive head first, and we'll speed off. And we would do it every Friday and Saturday. <laughs> and... I would take everyone to um, either a party or I, we would go to um, the local cruising spot, which was a park, and um, we would just act a fucking mess and cause a lot of mayhem. <laughs> I love this. Oh, yeah. I wish I could have been a part of this. This sounds like a moment. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Late, years later, um, 
after I got on drag race and stuff, I went to one of the places I would do my beer runs. I'm a, I think Statue of Limitations has run out, so I can't get in trouble. For yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I remember I was at one of the stores and I was getting rung up for a birthday card. And the lady was like, um, is that all you want? And I was like, oh, yeah, just a card. Thank you. And she's like, you're not going to get anything else? And I was like, well, shit, is there a sale or something? Like, <laughs> when, when am I supposed to get some gum or a lotto ticket? Like, what? And she's like, you do realize I know who you are. And I was like, oh, you watch Drag Race? And she's like, well, yeah, not only that, but um, I've been watching you for years. And I was like, oh, like, where? I had VIP, I had Mickey's Rage. I'm naming all the clubs and stuff. She's like, no, on our security cameras. And I was like, oh, I'm watching what? And she's like, you're the drag queen that would like to come in here and steal on the weekends. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I was gagged, bitch. I was like, wait, what? And I had to be like, I couldn't be like, no, it's not me. Because yeah. obviously you know who I am now. And then she was like, she's like, we would let you do that. She's like, you do realize you were doing that every Friday and Saturday for a couple years. I was like, yeah. <laughs> she's like, we would let you do that because it would be the funniest thing for us to watch on the camera. <laughs> she's like, you would just run in with your little mini skirt and blonde wig and act like we couldn't, like nobody was watching you. And you'd just be like, snatch, run. And she's like, we would laugh so hard i was like do you guys still have that footage <laughs> she's like no of course not but she was like it was the funniest thing ever she was like and i would tell people when i would see you on tv mayhem used to come and steal beer at my job all the time <laughs> well you you applied how many times for drag race i started applying after season two okay yeah and then i finally got on so season 10 comes around yeah where were you when you got the phone call? I'll never forget. I was in uh, Vancouver, Canada. I was up there doing Pride. Okay. And um, finished the gig. I was flying back home. I get to the airport. And um, I get a phone call. And I'm like, what's this number? And I wasn't going to answer. But I was out of the country. So I was like, maybe it's important. You should probably answer it. So I was like, hello? And it was one of the producers, uh, Mandy. And she was like, hi, May. And I said, hi. She said, hey, so I'm uh, calling from Drag Race. And I was like, uh-huh. She was like, this is the call you've been waiting for. And I was like, what? I was like, well, no, 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 no. I was like, what does this mean? Because in my head, I've, I think I've rehearsed this moment. I'm like, wait, what? And she's like, I, she's like, I want to personally call you to tell you this because I know you've been waiting so long for this. And she's like, you finally made it. And I was like, and I, I was in the stall in the bathroom and I started weeping. I just, ah, 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 that kind of crying. And the funniest thing happened after that, because all of a sudden I hear a little boy and he's like, dad, that lady is in there crying. <laughs> he's like, there's a lady in the bathroom. And I was like, I'm okay. <laughs> I will never forget it. I, I broke down at the airport because that's where I got it. I got the call in, in Vancouver. So you get on the show. Your dress, that first episode, mm -hmm. the glove dress. Yes. Iconic. <laughs> Iconic. Thank you. Your whole performance, not your actual whole, but the Courtney, <laughs> Courtney Love whole performance. <laughs> Iconic. I mean, the, my whole does perform a lot, but yeah, that one too. Um, yeah, that was that was a fun lip sync. So, what was it like that first episode? Um, stressful, stressful because uh, that was not the first dress I made. I made another dress before I made that one. I made that that glove dress the day a couple like. Literally a couple hours before we went down the runway. Wow. I started making something because we had to get stuff out of the bin from the 99 cent store. And I had something in my mind of like a corset, but I grabbed all the Brillo pads, like the, the like copper ones mm -hmm. and the silver ones. And I was like, okay, I'm going to deconstruct this, make it like a, a big old like abstract, like corset thing and blah, blah, blah. I'm cutting my hands up doing this. And after that first day that we had to work on our outfit, I got in the room and I just bawled because it just looked terrible. And I'll never forget it because Eureka was like, girl, 
you're gonna be okay and i'm and i knew in her mind she was like this bitch is going home because <laughs> it was terrible it was ugly and i just prayed that night and i was like god i was like help me i was like I, I i need to figure this out help me and i just thought about my mom praying over me and laying her hands on me and got into the workroom that morning i looked in the corner and i saw the black gloves on the ground that was the only thing left over that no one touched and i was like oh my god there it is and then i just grabbed the gloves and grabbed the umbrella and some trash bags and started braiding the trash bags to make it look like distressed leather and and sewed it all together and threw it on and walked down the runway. My reaction was genuine. I literally lost my shit because I thought I got finally got there 10 years later or on to season 10 after all those years of auditioning and I was going to go home first. So I fucking lost my shit that day. I was just like, yeah, oh my God. yeah it was a mess.